Scientifically, it takes our brain about a fourth of a second to actually perceive something after it happens. We're only actually watching or observing what's happening in the past. So then when are you? When are you exactly? Are you actually in the moment now or are you actually in the past? So I'm going to reveal that secret to you. I want you to think about that while we learn about hypodimension. So what is the frequency? Okay, we always talk about frequencies, quantum frequencies, right frequencies, uh, PMF frequencies. Like, what, what is a frequency? Well, scientifically speaking, it's basically a rate of speed, how fast something is moving uh, in a certain period of time, or some kind of oscillation. And you can see here in the diagram, this is a basic, um, basic sine wave with, uh, with basic three sine waves that are happening at the same time. So when we talk about frequencies, um, we also know that there are right frequencies. A lot of our technology is based on right frequencies and right frequencies are created or invented by Dr. Royal Wife, who theorized that there was a potential of killing diseases or cancerous cells by sending an electrical pulse identical to the cell's unique electromagnetic frequency. These frequencies were known as right frequencies. So he claimed that he had proof that he could destroy cancer cells. And actually recently on YouTube, um, there's another person who's done the same thing, and it's nothing new. Basically, bright frequencies is a way to do two things. It has a blunt effect, that's the first way. Blunt effect, meaning it's, it uses sound to vibrate something physically. Back and forth, back and forth, as fast as possible. Until it vibrates so quickly that it breaks. A right? second way that bright frequencies work is through a subtle way. Let's say that you want to, you don't want to just shake it back and forth to break it. You want to target something inside of a cell. Let's say part of its internal system, or you want to move the cell, or you want to decapacitate the cell. Then what do you do? Basically, this is how it works. Every frequency has three things, as I mentioned. Frequency, which is the length divided by one unit length of time. And this is the me measurement of a dimensional structure. So it could be a structure, it could be uh, something as big as a, as a building, or it could be something as big as a planet, or it could be something as small as an uh, atom, or even a, uh, I mean a cell in your body, or a virus, or a uh, cancer cell, or cancer um, virus, or whatever you call it. Um, another way is, to, is by calculating the resistance that the frequency has to travel through. For example, your body has a lot of water in it. So it has to have enough, it has to calculate the resistance of your body's water so that it has enough amplitude, or so to speak, the power or volume in order to penetrate that water and to affect that cell or affect that virus. It causes disruption of cells or direct manipulation of it, or it causes some kind of entropy or loss of energy. Let's say, for example, that there's a tiny worm or a cancer cell and that there's a dominant behavior. Let's say that it breeds um, more than it eats. So, and it does that for a certain cycle. Let's say every three and a half minutes, it does that certain behavior, or it takes 80 seconds to digest something. So what you can do is actually use frequencies to disrupt the pattern or to disrupt the repetitive um, behavior of that cell. And by doing that, you are basically manipulating the operating processes of the cell, and you could potentially do the same thing, make it, make it sick or make it collapse on itself. You can actually target different parts of uh, a primarium. So if right frequencies can destroy structures, what if frequencies can reinforce structures instead? For example, what if we can make healthy cells stronger, make bones stronger, and make your organs healthier. If you can make frequency, let's say an opera singer sings and it, it shatters the wine glass. How does that happen? It's because the opera singer's voice creates a frequency that is in resonance with the glass. And it shakes the glass so violently that it shatters. But what if you can use that same idea to reinforce a structure rather than to shatter it? because it should be able to do the same thing. Now, primary right frequencies were designed to alter physical structures. That's their primary purpose. So brainwave entrainment is, um, there's a study done by the Monroe Institute, and they showed that brainwaves can be measured with 
electromagnetic, um, well, it sends up, is electromagnetic field in your brain. Every, we all have it. And they measure people's brains, and some of those who have more noise in their brain waves, for example, that means that it was out of harmony. Just imagine there's a little kid playing piano, and they're mashing all the keys like this. You know, that doesn't sound good, right? So imagine that there is that happening in your brain in the, in the form of electromagnetic waves. So all this noise is happening. They found that there were a lot of negative issues and health issues with people that have that kind of brainwave pattern. Now, the opposite is true. They found that people who had coherent brainwaves, brainwaves that were in harmony with each other, had positive health uh, attributes, positive mental and physical health attributes. How can you program your brain into these deeper, lower frequencies when you can't actually hear them? What sound could you play in order to make that brain uh, tune to that frequency? For example, if you want to tune to 50 hertz, your brain to 50 hertz, you can easily play 50 hertz. It'll sound like, but you can still play it. It's very low, but you can still hear it. But if you want to tune your brain to five hertz, that's below any kind of sound that any speaker can make or any phone can make. So how do you play a sound in order to program and, and train your brain to a lower brainwave? So the secret is in something called binaural beats. A lot of us has heard of binaural beats. So what is it? What does it mean binaural beat? Is it some kind of drum beat or something like that? No, it's not a drum beat. Basically what it means it is, is creating a differential through your two ears. Okay? So just it's basically creating a differential. So let's say that you want to hear 10 hertz. What happens when you play 250 in one year and 260 in the other year? What happens is that the difference is 10. And when that happens, your brain creates, or those frequencies collide each other in between your brain and creates the 10 hertz frequencies. So basically, you use two frequencies to make a child frequency, and that's how you create lower frequencies inside of your brain. So what is hyperdimensional? You remember that we are going to share with you hyperdimensional frequencies. Well. That just basically means it's beyond the conventional three dimensions. So we're going to the fourth dimension. What is 4D then? Well, 4D is basically now using the same same uh, concept because what happened, what did we do from 1D to 2D? We just added another 90 degree dimension in toward our dimension. Now we created a square. What happened from 2D to 3D? We just created another 90 degree dimension and, added, and we created a cube. So what happened from 3D to 4D is just a simple extension of that process, which is to add another 90 degree dimension into it, and that creates 4D. So to, to explain this a little further, I got some chopsticks. You, can, you have chopsticks or some straws, you can play with this at home, okay? So okay, if I do this, this is one dimension. Now, what if I add another 90 degrees to it, right? And now you can see there's two dimensions. Now, if I add another 90 degrees to it, what does that become? Now that's three dimensions, okay? So where's the fourth dimension? The fourth dimension is here. Okay, so now we have four dimensions. And now if you a object with this, this is what it's gonna look like. It's the tesseract. Okay, so those are the four dimensions. What they are are complex information fields of intention. Okay, so that's the technical way of explaining it. So for example, we are using different sensory, uh, different kinds of input into creating different dimensions in our frequencies. For example, there's space, there's time, there's our sensory input, which is the current current measurement or current composite moment of our experience using our five senses. Okay, so that itself is, we can say is the three dimensions. Now, if we go further and we add the conscious process, now we add another dimension, which is the fourth dimension. Magnetic fields in brainwave states. So there's a the German scientist, his name was Hamer. And he discovered that our internal brainwave processes correspond to our moods and to our health. And then the magnetic fields that are measured in our brain or measured throughout our organs, um, if they saw in the scan there were these black marks or pot marks in the field, they would correspond to negative emotional states. So let's say you took a brain scan and they found that there, and they measured the electromagnetic field or took some organ scans and they can see that there is some some empty shadows 
in that electromagnetic field. Well, wherever there's a shadow, it just shows that your emotional state is actually um, poor in that organ, in that, in that part of your body. And what they also found is that if you can change those magnetic fields around the organs and around your brain, that person naturally starts to get well. Let me ask you again, what if every single moment in time and space has a unique electromagnetic footprint? For example, emotions like joy have a landscape and exposing a person to that landscape or to that quality will start to move them to that state. Okay? So I'm going to show you exactly how to do just that. How you can create reality by using frequencies. Here's a person who tested it with leaves. So with a leaf, with no frequency treatment, they put it in the, uh, both of the leaves in a really pretty poor environment, like poor lighting with cigarettes, incense in the house. It was hot and they had perfumes and different aromas, which is not good for plants. So they put it in there and then one of them that didn't receive the frequency, you can see if you blow this up, um, you know, there's black spots and it's starting to shrivel up and things like that. Now, they had a leaf from the same plant and they played frequencies during the same period um, on the plant. And after a few days, that it had no black spots, no signs of decay, and no discoloration. And maybe this is one of the secrets that the Egyptians had in order to, to um, preserve their mummies, right? Here's another test that one of our uh, um, closed group people did using our frequencies based on plant growth acceleration. So this person had three pots of plants, same size, same soil, one grain of wheat in each pot. So what happened? Pot R, the one on the right here, had no frequencies and it grew to 23 centimeters. Pot L here, the red one here, grew to 26 centimeters, was exposed to crystal ball healing sounds. So these just had a crystal ball and they, and they rang the ball to, to, this, uh, to this plant. Now pot D, grew to 32 centimeters and that was exposed to the frequencies. So the frequencies actually help this plant grow faster than all these other plants. Here's another, another test that we did was using the, um, using the frequency on, on water. So with no frequencies, they put this um, water in a bucket or in a bowl and after it's frozen, you can see that there's no real um, uniformity in the, in the ice. Now the ones that are treated with frequency, so we played the frequency to the water and we froze it and you can see it had uniform uniformity in the water as if the water itself underwent some profound changes in this, in this geometric symmetry. And that's just by exposing it to a frequency. This is not even electromagnetic, this is just the sound. Blood samples, so here, here's a, uh, someone who, who was looking at their actual blood samples in a uh, microscope. So this is 6, six o'clock, 6.05 p.m. before exposure to the frequency. You can see the blood uh, cells kind of clumping together. You see these little strands of the blood cells all, all making a string. Okay, uh, They're called agglutinated, I don't even know how to pronounce that. So about two hours later, or three out, uh, two hours, 40 minutes later, after playing the frequencies, they did the blood sample again looked at it under the microscope and look what happened to the blood cells. The blood was fluid with no more agglutination. Okay? Release of bacteria stronger. After, so like the morning after they did the test again and you can see, you know, some of it was nice and even but then some of it started to be uh, sticking together again which shows that um, something happened in the middle. Something happened to their blood while they were listening to their frequencies. It actually made it um, more fluid. It actually made it more healthy because all that blood cells sticking together is one of the first signs of, of cancer. Let me give you a word of warning. So um, if you do use these frequencies, you may experience states, mental states, emotional states that you may have never experienced before. And these states may be quite intense. So we've had situations where people who are chronically, chronically depressed start to cry. And then we ask them, why are you crying? And then they say, I just feel so happy. Um, and some people, they, they get such a, such a kick from these that they start using them all day long. Um, but you're, they're not intended to be used all day long. 
okay? Because that actually stresses out your adrenal glands and then you start to overload your system with too much energy. So um, use it according to the guidelines that we're going to give you. Also, there's different mixed reactions with people who have sociopathic pathic tendencies. What do I mean? Um, for, for example, they re react in two extreme ways. Either they will just don't light it at all because they, it's a natural for them. Or they will um, experience something that's you know in a dramatic or pronounced effect. So for example, if somebody is manic depressive, um, they would either they would either have it in the, when they're in a the negative phase, it would make them feel very annoying or it would make them feel very uncomfortable because they want to stay in that negative phase and they don't want to come out to a positive phase. So when they hear a track or one of our frequencies that are intended to help them elevate themselves, they will find it annoying because they want to stay in the negative. Let's work together as a family, as a, as a group, as a team to raise the vibration of the planet and to, and to really make a difference. Okay? So until next time, use the chi and prosper.